everything covered but her eyes. What a cruel male-dominated culture. I remember this to this day. I got down on my knees, and um, instead of praying to Jesus, which I'd done in the past, I prayed to God, and I just said, Dear God, I've tried everything I could. I, I just want to worship you in the way that you want me to worship you, and I don't know what it is, um, but you need to bring it to me. We have one God whose name's Allah, Allah And his final messenger's Muhammad Peace be upon him This is our religion, Islam, Islam This is the Deen Show Girl, love you, man. I love you. 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 I we know Islam is the fastest growing way of life in the world, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, inshallah. And I want to know, people want to know, like, what is it? What's your background? And what had you so interested that you accepted Islam and you're still living it to this day? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for having me here. And I became a Muslim, as I said, it was uh, well over 30 years ago. But for me, my journey began much earlier when I was quite young. Um, I was raised Episcopalian, but from a very early age, I want to say even 10 years old, I had questions, and I wasn't getting the answers that really felt right to me, and so I started my own search, and my parents actually always encouraged that. They were very open-minded. They were happy that I was a spiritual person, that I was curious, and I just really reached out to different churches. I used to go to um, different denominations of Christianity. I hadn't really expanded beyond that. I was in a small farming town in Michigan, but um, I explored everything I could, and nothing really felt like it was it for me. And this continued all through college, actually. And then at one point, I felt like I'd done what I could do in that maybe I was approaching it wrong. And so and this is, I can remember this to this day, I got down on my knees and um, instead of praying to Jesus, which I'd done in the past, I prayed to God and I just said, dear God, I've tried everything I could. I, I just want to worship you in the way that you want me to worship you. And I don't know what it is, um, but you need to bring it to me because I've tried everything and none of them feel right and I trust you and I just, I'm done with my own search. I need you to bring it to me and show it to me because I don't care what it is, how strange it is, how different, how foreign, how unusual, how different from my own background. I just want to worship you the way you want me to worship you. And about a year and a half later, I was introduced to Islam and I knew immediately Immediately. Immediately. So you, you said immediately. You got down on your knees and you're praying to the Creator alone for guidance. Just like Jesus prayed. He prayed not to himself. He prayed to the Creator of the heavens and earth. And you're asking for guidance. And then you're exposed to Islam and you knew right away. What were some of the things about Islam that captivated you? The fact that you're worshiping God directly. That it's a conversation between you and God, and that the Quran really felt like um, a personal message, um, something from God directly to me. I know maybe that was selfish to think of it like that, but I really felt like, wow, this is for me. This is God talking to me. And that was just exciting, and it felt right, and it was right, and it has been right, and continues to be right, and I try to share that with other people. Uh, tell us when you're talking to some of your family or other Christians now and they're just looking at you and they're like, how can you do that? You know, there's so many different things that Islam 
is advocating they'll think they'll think you know islam is about oppressing women you know they'll see you now you know in the hijab and then they'll hear about you know so much violence in the middle east all these things you know there's a list of array of different things that come up many much of it's mixed you know with falsehood you know a lot of distortion lies and whatnot so how do you tackle those things when those tough questions are come at you let's start with one of them like you know how can you become a muslim when islam oppresses women for example uh, that's a great question, and I do get that. Um, to this day, I get, you that. Still get that. I still get that. Uh, you know, no one really says it exactly like that, but you can feel it coming at you. Like, yeah. why would you want to be a, a, a Muslim? You're a woman. Why? Yeah. So we yeah. asked a tough question for you. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you did. And um, I have various answers, but for myself, Obviously, I'm, I'm not oppressed. I don't feel oppressed. I don't believe Islam oppresses women. But you have to be um, specific in your answer. And that's part of da'wah, as you know, is finding out what the best answer is for each person. What it is, what is the root of their question? What is it fear? Is it curiosity? Are they trying to mock you? Or, you know, I try to ask them questions back to find out the root of their um, question and then answer it from there because really there is no oppression. And for myself, you know, wearing hijab, it's not something I did immediately. Um, it was after the birth of my son, who was my second child, um, that I started wearing hijab. But um, to many people's surprise, it wasn't something I discussed with my husband. It wasn't something he had asked me to do. I woke up one day after many days of praying about it, and I said, you know what, today's the day, and I'm going to wear hijab. So it had nothing to do with him forcing me to do it. It was something that was personal and private between me and Allah. Yeah. And uh, do people get surprised when you tell them and when they find out that Mary, the mother of Jesus, wore hijab? Right. And then uh, you see nuns who are the best of Christianity, right? They end up wearing pretty much what hijab. I think one thing I've found, and you perhaps have as well, is that people have they have notions that are presented to them that they've heard over and over, and they just don't think outside the box. They haven't thought of it like that. And when you say that to them, they're like, oh, yeah, you're, you're right. Women do wear, like, I do see pictures of Mary, you know, dressed like this and, and you know, and so forth. You know, it's just something that they hadn't connected with Islam yet until you do that for them. But it's obvious once you do. And that's a good feeling to see that light bulb kind of go off in their head. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and show them also. This is actually from a, a, a friend of mine. It's a Christian friend um, who sent me this. And inshallah, uh, Patrick, he also, I think uh, he's having an affinity towards Islam. But he sent me this. And what's your reaction? We're going to put this up so they can see it also. Yes, sorry. Oh, okay, so here it says uh, there's a woman, and she's dressed uh, like she's going to the beach, okay. and, it sa and she's saying that everything covered but her eyes, oh, what a cruel male-dominated culture. And then it has the woman here on the other side, and she's covered up, and then she's thinking about the other woman, nothing covered but her eyes. What a cruel male-dominated culture. <laughs> <laughs> well, that hits it right on the head, doesn't it? Yeah, when I um, go to the beach, which I do, and I'll be fully covered, and I've gotten over that, the stairs, and um, no one's actually ever approached me and asked me. Certainly I get looks, but it, it is, it's just like night and day. When you see women like that, you feel so bad for them. I do, personally, because they've just been taught this. They've been taught that their body is what's the most important thing mm -hmm. about them, and it's something to be proud of. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the body God gave me. I live in it, I try to take care of it, but I also honor it by respecting it. And part of respecting it is privacy, keeping it for myself and for my husband. And these women don't know that, and I just, I feel like when I explain that to people who ask me, I've never had anyone on the beach ask me, but um, I've had people, I've had this discussion with women before. Um, I can see them thinking it over um, because it really, 
it, it is something to think of your body as belonging just to you, but what are you going to do with that? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do with that information? And we kind of have a discussion from there, and it, it can go some interesting places. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I want, to, I want to thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us here in uh, just the home of uh, Bill Clinton, huh? Has, has he connected here with the Muslim community? Has there any been, has anybody, uh, has he had any exposure to Muslims and Islam? Do you know anything that's going on with uh, him? Is he still, this is his home base, huh? It is, and you know that, I really don't know. I know that he did come here um, frequently when he was president. In fact, I met him once uh, when my children were little. He, uh, we live out by a golf course, and of course he golfed a lot. And I took my kids, and I was in the full hijab, and I had my little kids put them on his lap, and he couldn't have been kinder or nicer, but um, it wasn't something. Well, so you met Bill Clinton. Yeah. You, so you met Bill Clinton here. while you were, you were uh, Muslim yeah, and, he, yeah. and hijab and everything. Yeah. And then you yeah, nobody said anything or had any. Yeah. In fact, it was my neighbors who knocked on my door and said, you got to come, you got to come. He's, he's yeah. out at the golf course. And, and I have a real good relationship with my neighbors, and um, they wanted me to be a part of that. And it's not something we even thought about. But, yeah, yeah that's the only encounter I ever had. But. Okay. Thank you, sister. May God Almighty Allah continue to bless you in your journey. Jazakallah. Salam alaykum to Allah. If you build a house, a masjid, for the sake of Allah, in return, Allah will build a house for you in the Jannah. That is the promise of our Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell us now, so you've been a principal here for how long? Um, seven years. Seven years. So are, are you excited now for the future project, oh, the expansion? Of course, yes. It's uh, going to be a new building, a nice building, a facility for the kids to play, to enjoy their time. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, brother, sister. How you doing? I'm here with Josh. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? So we were walking out. I said, Assalamu alaikum. And you responded, Well, alaikum salam. Yes, sir. Sure. How'd you learn that? Um, well, I mean, it's a common term that I've heard growing up, you know, just watching things like, uh, like we mentioned before, Malcolm X, because uh, uh, he was somebody I kind of looked up to, you know, as, as fresh, especially with his mannerisms. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a greeting, and, you know, so I know how to greet back. Yeah. Because I thought, because we're here, we're in Little Rock, Arkansas, right. and we're actually at a, this is a masjid here. So I thought, well, our brother Josh, is uh, he's Muslim, but he's not. And I was like, what are you waiting for? Where? <laughs> and then we talked a little bit, we started talking about Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, their roots actually being Islam. Right, right, they are. Yeah. So do you, what else do you know about Islam besides Salaam Alaikum? Um, so... And besides, and besides the hype sometimes in the media. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even pay attention to the media too much anyways with things. That's with anything. Um, but uh, the, the things I know, uh, I know about the uh, Prophet Muhammad. You know, um, a lot of the other things I know usually come from the tenets of maybe like the Nation of Islam. Yeah, a lot of know. people sometimes confuse that. Right, yeah, yeah, right, right. And I, and I understand the difference with that. You know, it'll be just like... Uh, trying to think of an ex- a good example but I, I without being offensive with anything no 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 go ahead give it raw we so give it right I, I say it, it'd be just like uh if you look at christianity right you have some groups out there that seem to be a little more you know uh extreme in their thoughts yeah, than, yeah. Than, than most would yeah. and malcolm x saw this and when he went to hajj actually right. You saw when he came back, you know what he wrote? He wrote actually that when he came back, he wrote that, you know, if uh, Americans implemented the teachings of Islam, this would eradicate the racism that we have today because he was sitting and praying with the, you know, the black, the white, the yellow, the all different shapes, sizes, and colors, you know, and he got to see the unity of humanity coming together under the worship of one and only one God. Right, right. And I, I, that change right there, you know, I thought that was an awesome change for him in his life, especially. I mean, the change going from where he was, where, you know, basically almost a heathen in prison to converting yeah. to Islam, that helped him. Mm-hmm. You know, as I feel, I feel that conversion would help Islam, Christianity. I think those can help because the tenets of those faiths, you know, it's, it's about love, family brothers brotherhood you know what i mean so you know uh, also a way that you carry yourself mm-hmm. you know i think that's important too and if people carried themselves that way you know possibly wouldn't be so many in prison right now mm-hmm. you know 
one of the the main the main core teaching of Islam is the oneness of God. This right. is the main thing, along with developing yourself to be the best example of a human being that you can be, living by the tenets of Islam, which teaches you to be an upright and standing, morally upright human being. But one of the most important teachings is, and we believe that every messenger that God Almighty sent came with the same message: right. worship one God and one God alone. This is the main main message. Did you ever get to exposure to this teaching? This what's called the pure monotheism of Islam. So um, I won't say I did. Um, How about this one? Did you know that Muslims believe and love Jesus? Right, right. Because right. uh, I know as far you know as, that one, huh? Right. I know as far as Islam, Islam goes, uh, he's a prophet, right? Yes, a mighty messenger, just like Abraham, no Moses, Noah, and all the other messengers. Right. One of the greatest messengers at that. Right, right. And because um, I, I know that. According to the teachings, it's the same, you know, God of Abraham, Absolutely, yes. God of Isaac. So um, it, it, the similarities are uncanny, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but the, the, when you think about the world, the three major religions of the world. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, that part I do know. Yeah. So uh, do you have any questions for me right now? Anything that's uh, been tickling you in the back? Anything that you like about Islam that I can answer? I don't think there's too many questions, you know, yeah. uh, I like to absorb things, yeah. that's it, as I learn, as I go on through life, yeah. and I learn, then, you know, that's when I absorb stuff, yeah. you know. Have you ever read the Quran? So I've never read the Quran, I've read pieces of it, yeah. but I've never read the whole Quran. I'm going to introduce you, and I'm going to leave one of these brothers here, Zakaria, this is the principal here, can I see you for a minute? Or Abdurraf, can I see you also? Who's going to take it upon yourself? Abdurraf, come here. And we got the principal, Zia, so we got the whole committee. This is our, this is our, our neighbor and friend, Josh. Who's going to, he never read the Quran. So I'm going to leave it to you guys. I'm leaving tomorrow, but I'm going to leave it on one of you guys to get him a translation and maybe some reading materials so he can go ahead and look at who's going to, who's it, who, you, you're going to do it? Yes, I'll do that. This is the principal. Have you met him before? No, I have not. Okay. All right. So how's that? It's a gift from me to you, from them to you. How's that? All right. That's fine. That's good. Yeah. I, I love and you, you can look me up at thedeanshow.com and any questions you ever have shoot me a, an email and my we'll, we'll hook up again and, and i'll answer those questions How's oh that? sure will sure will. it was really nice meeting you it was good meeting you too all right brother all right, all right Josh. so our mission statement right now is to serve a diverse community um to serve a diverse community uh, uh, and build a better future inspired by islam can you tell us a little about the community here and the current status of the muslim community in little rock arkansas so alhamdulillah, we have a very diverse uh, community here in the city of uh, Little Rock in Arkansas. Uh, a lot of people don't think, you know, we have a community, but alhamdulillah, we have a lot of Muslims here. Uh, we have uh, our Friday prayer. We do it. Uh, we had to do it in the gym because the, the, the masjid has gotten too small for us. Uh, we've, uh, we have about 500 people that attend the Friday prayer. We have uh, uh, our school that goes from... Uh, infant uh, infant program all the way to the eighth grade and inshallah we want to keep expanding with the school uh, we have our Sunday school we have our Quran classes we have our youth programs uh, sisters halaqa uh, many many things alhamdulillah this uh, this community is doing we have da'wah programs uh, and we also have our food food pantry mashallah I've noticed that you have another project going on yes, so what was the need now because you're in one location, but you're moving to another location. Tell us about that. So the majority of the Muslims that live in the in the city of Little Rock live on the west side, in the newer side uh, of the city. Um, we wanted to have a, a center, complete center, that will accommodate everybody that lives on the west side of the city. Uh, if, uh, it's about the, the, the location we chose. It's about five minutes, six minute drive from the majority of the Muslim that live on the west side uh, of the city, alhamdulillah. And we are growing. Uh, like I said, the masjid does not fit us anymore, so we have to pray in the gym. Um, our school, uh, uh, you know, we want to move to high school and keep expanding to ninth grade, tenth grade, and so, so on and so forth. Uh, but we cannot do it in the, in the current location. And tell us, I've seen, when I went over there, you guys actually started breaking ground. What's the current situation with the construction? Yes. So, alhamdulillah, we finished phase one, which is getting the, the, the ground ready uh, for the buildings. We've there, uh, we bought uh, about 10 acres of land. Uh, we cleared all the trees uh, and we did a lot of site, site work. Uh, and we also expanded uh, the road, Canis Road. Uh, the, the land is in really good spot. It's in the heart of West Little Rock, which is 
mashallah, the newer area where everybody is, uh, the, the growth in the city is on this side. So now we want to uh, raise more funds in order to start with, uh, with the school building, inshallah. May Allah uh, bless this project, Amen. and inshallah, I come back next time. I see it all come to a reality and fruition, inshallah. I mean, jazakallah khair for being Amen. here. And we're so happy to have you here. here Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa Cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about, and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions, about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.